Apple doesn't care about being first to anything. Over the years, the company has taken a number of already popular product types and made them even better. They did it with the iPod, the iPhone, the iPad, and many more. Now we can't live without these devices. Apple hopes to repeat this success with the HomePod, its first speaker in 12 years, following the great but ill-fated iPod Hi-Fi. HomePod is a speaker first and foremost, with smart features as an added bonus. But does it really redefine the category? HomePod's design is Apple all over. Simple yet elegant. It's the perfect size for almost any room. Measuring in at just 7 inches tall, with no mechanical buttons or identifying marks on its cylindrical shell, HomePod looks like a smaller, squished version of the Mac Pro. That's not a bad thing. You can place it seemingly anywhere and it looks good. It never sticks out like a sore thumb, and its single cable proves easy to hide. There's no polished stainless steel or anodized aluminium, just a custom fabric mesh that not only looks good, but improves acoustic performance. That completely seamless mesh covers almost the entire surface of the HomePod. The only thing you can see is the round glass panel on the top of the speaker. It provides simple touch controls for controlling your music, plus a mesmerising ball of colour that lets you know when Siri is working. Apple's attention to detail means even HomePod's power cord bears a refined fabric finish. This helps it blend effortlessly into the surrounding, and prevents it from becoming kinked and tangled. HomePod's look is beautifully subtle and understated. Apple wants its audio quality to be the big selling point, not how it looks next to your TV or on your coffee table. Visitors not already aware of the HomePod will have no idea that it's an Apple product. HomePod is smaller than you might expect, much smaller than it looks in Apple's images, and surprisingly weighty at 5.5 pounds. That's thanks to all of the clever technology Apple has crammed inside the speaker, including 7 tweeters, 6 microphones, and a high excursion woofer. There's also an A8 processor, the same chip found inside the iPhone 6, which takes care of Siri, enables real-time modelling of the woofer mechanics, beam forming, and advanced echo cancellation. Its weight, combined with a soft base, keeps HomePod firmly in its place. It won't get knocked over easily, and it won't vibrate excessively when you play music at high volumes. Whenever you speak to Siri or it speaks back, the HomePod's LEDs light up. This nice visual cue quickly confirms that Apple's smart assistant has heard you. It's a surprisingly useful aid, since the beep you may be accustomed to hearing when using Siri is disabled by default on the HomePod. Volume is easily controlled with the touchscreen if you prefer to do it manually, while a single tap in the centre of the screen will play and pause your music. A double tap will skip to the next song, and a triple tap will skip backward. These controls will feel familiar to those who use earpods and airpods. But over the past few days, I've found I've barely touched the HomePod itself because Siri works so well, and it's much more convenient which I'll come back to in a minute. It couldn't be easier to set up the HomePod. As soon as you plug it in for the first time and bring your iPhone near it, a setup card greets you. Then you simply choose which room you're placing the HomePod in and log in with your Apple ID to transfer settings for things like Wi-Fi and Apple Music. It's delightfully easy like pairing AirPods or an Apple Watch. There's no tedious typing of usernames and passwords or having to connect it to your router. If there's anything you need to change at a later date, like choosing another room or changing Siri's accent, you can use the Home app on iOS. As I've already mentioned, HomePod's real selling point is its sound. Forget about everything else when dropping $349 on this speaker. Audio quality is what you really need to care about. And just as Apple promised, it's spectacular. The speaker sounds best on a flat, stable surface, nothing hollow or too thin. HomePod might be packed with cutting edge technology, but you're not going to get the most out of it if you stick it on a thin IKEA desk that wobbles when you type. When I first played it on a flimsy desk in my office, I wasn't too impressed. I moved it to the corner of my living room on a solid TV unit, and it made the world of difference. HomePod's tweeters sit at the very bottom of the speaker, so a sturdy surface really helps. Once you've chosen a good spot, HomePod does the rest. It takes a series of steps to perfectly adjust its sound output to accommodate the room it's in. Using its microphones, HomePod detects any nearby walls to determine how sound will bounce off them. It then uses its tweeters to form an array of sound beams, assigned to direct and ambient sounds. The speaker shoots ambient sounds at the walls and focuses direct sounds right at you. When you play music, HomePod then analyzes the left and right channels of your track and decides which sounds should go into which beams. It also measures the reflection of the bass from the subwoofer to ensure the bottom end doesn't take over your music. Thanks again to its accelerometer, HomePod knows when you've moved it, and it goes through the setup process once again. So no matter where it's positioned or the size of your room, you can enjoy incredible sound quality every time. It's mind-boggling that such a small package can deliver exceptionally large sound. The high-end manages to be bright without breaking, the bass is simply a triumph. 
It's deep and powerful, and it doesn't overpower the music and wreck the entire experience. While a lot of speakers will either under or over deliver on bass, HomePod balances it like nothing I've heard before. HomePod delivers its best sound at lower volumes. It manages to create amazing soundscapes without having to push to the top volumes. But when you do, the speaker still shines. Very few speakers I've tried, especially in its price range, can maintain the same control at full volume. A lot of speakers start to lose composure or crackle and peak at full volume. The HomePod just doesn't. But HomePod never really gets too loud. As I mentioned in my HomePod unboxing video, Apple's speaker never gets nearly as loud as I expected. It certainly fills your room with sound when there's little to drown it out, but use it for a party, and I'm not sure a single HomePod will be powerful enough. AirPlay 2, when it finally arrives, will help by allowing you to pair multiple HomePods. You'll be able to use them in stereo with two speakers that takes care of left and right channels, or set them all to deliver the same sound in the same way a Sonos system can. Even at full volume, Siri can hear my commands from across the room. I don't have to shout at the top of my voice and emphasize every word. You really must see this in action to appreciate how well Siri listens on your HomePod. Like a small boat on the ocean. This is Fight Song by Rachel Platten. And emotion like how a single word can make a It just works. As I mentioned, I've barely had any physical interaction with HomePod. Anytime I want to play a song, I just ask Siri and it takes care of it. If I ask a question, Siri answers it. Hey Siri, who is Steve Wozniak? Steven Gary Wozniak, also nicknamed The Woz, is an American inventor, electronics engineer, programmer, philanthropist, and technology entrepreneur who co-founded Apple Incorporated. Send a text, no problem. Hey Siri, send a text to Apple Watch World. Which Apple Watch world? Siri is great and I'll fight that to the death. Having said that, I do have an issue with Siri's limitations on HomePod. Apple implemented a number of ridiculous restrictions that leave Siri nowhere near as powerful as Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant. HomePod can't make calls, order you an Uber, or deliver you some food. You can do these things with Siri on an iPhone, but for some reason, not on HomePod. But it could have something to do with the fact that HomePod offers no protection from unauthorized purchases. Unlike other Apple devices, Siri doesn't differentiate between multiple users. HomePod has no way of confirming that commands are being made by you. This means giving Siri too much power could create all kinds of problems. For instance, someone might order a pizza or a taxi that you'll have to pay for even though you didn't want it. This lack of voice recognition also creates another problem you'll need to be aware of before using HomePod around other people. If you allow HomePod to deal with your personal requests, it can read and send messages, take phone calls and more. That means anyone can use your speaker to read your last text and send a new one from your iPhone, and you might not know anything about it. Fixing this should rise to the top of Apple's list. The good news is, the HomePod music selections don't need to interfere with your Apple Music recommendations. So if you have a roommate who loves listening to Chris Stapleton on your HomePod, you won't see Stapleton tracks appearing on your iPhone when you open the music app. HomePod does work alongside other Apple devices to determine which one is best for handling your Siri requests. For instance, if you ask Siri to do something HomePod can't do, it will automatically hand the request to another device, such as your iPhone, that does have the power. If you're not an Apple Music user, the HomePod isn't for you. It's that simple. Apple Music is the only streaming service the HomePod fully supports. You can stream music from apps like Spotify on your iPhone over AirPlay, but you can't control them with your voice or ask Siri to play certain tracks. That's going to be a major downside for a lot of people. Although sound quality is the big selling point, Siri is the icing on the cake. Its inability to fetch tracks or control third-party music services is a major roadblock that could make HomePod a bust for many people. When you spend $349 on a speaker, you don't want to be told how you can use it. The experience shouldn't be worse because you don't subscribe to one particular service. And the sad reality is, this is unlikely to change. HomePod almost certainly won't embrace Spotify, Tidal, or any other service. If you're already invested in Apple's ecosystem and you love music, then HomePod is well worth your money. It's an amazing speaker with sound quality you won't find anywhere else in its price range. In fact, you'd have to pay thousands to get the same audio features elsewhere. I think HomePod will become an even better offering with the release of AirPlay 2, but for now, it's more than good enough by itself. The HomePod doesn't redefine smart speakers, but it is a contender for the best out of the competition. If Apple loosens its grip on Siri and keeps improving HomePod's features and functions, this little smart speaker will be perfect.